everyone, today I'm gonna do the video of my third trimester and just spoiler alert, I've had my baby already so I can't really show you my belly right now but I'll show you photos of what it looked like towards the end of my third trimester but yeah, I've had my baby already uh, actually at 40 weeks exactly so third trimester goes from 27 to 40 plus whatever or before 40, you know, whenever you have your baby uh, but yeah, 40 is what they usually tell you and yeah, my baby came literally on the 40th I'm gonna do a separate video on my delivery and birth story there's a lot to talk about there so yeah I'll do a separate video which will go after this one so if you want to be notified subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram you'll know more there if I post about it if I remember but there's already like a little teaser of what happened um, on my Instagram if you want to follow me on there and see the photo that I posted about that but yeah I'm gonna do the video of my third trimester now and then I'll do all my birth all my birth story in a different one so i've got my notes on my phone of course i do so the first thing i have is week 28 i actually went to the hospital uh to the triage ward whatever it is at the hospital because i had reduced uh fetal movement so basically i couldn't feel my baby for a couple of hours and in the third trimester if you don't feel your baby regularly they tell you to come in and get checked put you on the monitor check that everything's okay and of course classic uh, as soon as I got there, baby started moving, so yeah, classic, but it's better to get checked and make sure that, you know, everything's okay, that you're happy with the movements and all that stuff. And they also told me at that point that my baby was breech, so he was head up rather than head down, but at week 28 they were not concerned because obviously there's still a lot of weeks to turn around and he obviously did later on. In week 29 I started having cramps, a bit like period cramps, but quite mild, so I was like, ooh, what is this? Is it Braxton Hicks? Is it not? I don't think it was at that point, but then I got them a bit later on. And I also had pain in my ribs when I was sneezing. My baby was quite high up, so I think whenever I sneezed, like he got a bit like close or into my ribs. I don't know how that works, but yeah. Basically it was painful when sneezing. I did look it up on Google and they said that they can break your ribs. But obviously I don't think that's from sneezing, but I think from kicking and that kind of thing if it's too strong. Obviously nothing happened, all good. And then... 31 weeks plus three, I had an appointment and at that point he had already turned around so he was head down and he didn't come back up um, the other way around, at least not when they checked him. So that was good and they also told me that he was slightly bigger than average. Here in the UK, they basically measure your belly from the top of the uterus to your pelvis and with that measurement they estimate baby's weight and baby's size. Obviously not very accurate, so you know, you can take it as you want. But they said slightly bigger than average and that was actually accurate for me. And week 32 I started getting more Braxton Hicks, so that's properly when I was feeling it. And the way to describe Braxton Hicks, which is fake contractions, they're not painful, they're just a bit of pressure. And it doesn't mean anything in terms of when you're gonna have your baby, they're just preparing your uterus for contracting and that kind of thing. And it just physically, like, and visually, you see your belly sort of go square and all in one bowl and for me I also got like a weird all over feeling so I knew that I was having those contractions before looking at my belly I don't know how to explain that feeling but it was just a weird feeling overall and then I looked at my belly and it was all like in a bowl on one side which is kind of weird to see and then after like a minute or so it just goes away and it's fine and I was also getting more nausea especially after being hungry not like properly hungry but like in between meals, you know, when you would have a snack, I would get really hungry and as soon as I got hungry, I felt nauseous. Obviously, very easy to fix, so having snacks in hand was amazing. And yeah, definitely recommend having loads of snacks that you can literally just quickly grab and eat without thinking about it, because yeah, that nausea does feel quite bad and I didn't want to repeat my first trimester, so yeah, I definitely had those in hand. And then also I forgot to say about week 31, they did my bloods. Um, they usually do it week 28, but they forgot, so they did it week 31. Uh, it came out that I had anemia, so they just gave me some iron tablets that I took up until the birth, and then I stopped. No one told me to stop, but I just did. I presumed that that's what I had to do, so I hope that that was the case. They did take my bloods after the birth, and they said that those were normal, so I imagine it's fine, but yeah, I did stop taking that actually. Week 34, I went again for a midwife appointment. My midwife wasn't there, so someone else did my measurement for my belly. And they measured it slightly lower. So based on that measurement, it kind of looked like my baby had stopped growing. So they referred me for another ultrasound. And when I went to, for that ultrasound, 
it was all normal, it was all fine, it was just, you know, someone else measuring you differently, I guess. Which, yeah, it's a bit funny because technically they're supposed to measure the same thing, but it came out completely different. Um, but that ultrasound, again, said that my baby was about 57% high, so at that point, 34 weeks, two and a half kilograms, which is quite big. So I was starting to get worried that he was going to be huge, but all good. And also my knuckles expanded, so this ring that I'm wearing right now is not my wedding ring, it's a different ring that I'm just wearing on that finger, because at one point it wasn't my fingers getting fat, it was just my knuckles literally expanding, so I couldn't get my rings past my bone, basically. Uh, so I took them off because I didn't want to get them stuck, and I just put this one uh, on this finger. They're now getting back to normal, I think, or you know, at least they feel looser, like this one feels looser than when I first put it on, and... I'm still not putting my proper rings on because I don't want to get them stuck but I think they are going back to normal and I also started using my pregnancy belt I just got one from Amazon uh, that has a few bands and you you know you can do it different ways and that really really helped with back pain and just supporting your back and your belly for walking around even around the flat like that was super useful so definitely recommend getting one of those pregnancy belts I was also feeling a lot of movement from baby about, yeah, week 34, week 35, a lot, lot of movement, day, night, any time of the day, <laughs> loads of movement, uh, couldn't really sleep because of it, hiccups as well, which to begin with people were talking about baby hiccups and I didn't really get it, I was like, no, I haven't felt that until I did and then, yeah, quite annoying because it goes on for a little bit, but yeah, baby hiccups, it happens. And then week 36, 37, I have here that I had a lot more pressure where I needed to go uh, P. Knowing what I know now, which I'll talk about a lot more when I do my birth delivery video, but knowing what I know now, uh, I think I just wasn't emptying my bladder properly from, yeah, probably from that point onwards. Um, I had a lot of pressure and, yeah, just don't think I was emptying my bladder properly. So going to the toilet or getting up from being sat down to getting up, I just felt a lot of pressure. Baby's head w must have been, like, properly pressuring against my bladder and not letting me uh, empty it. So yeah, I'll talk about the consequences of that for my birth, but yeah, I think that's probably when it started, but I didn't realize at the time. Getting up from the floor, which is quite funny, but getting up from the floor became quite difficult. Like putting my shoes on and things like that that I would usually do on the floor, I couldn't do and then I had to like maneuver to come up. So just being very uncomfortable. For me, that's the third trimester was just being uncomfortable. And every week that passes, you get more and more uncomfortable to the point that you're like, when is my baby coming out? I need him to come out, like, basically any time now. You don't want him to come out sooner than he has to, because obviously he's still developing in there, but, you know, you get to a point where you're like, I know it's happening soon, so I want to meet my baby, when I get rid of my belly, when I, you know, go back to normal, whatever that is. And that started happening there. So week 37, I started drinking raspberry leaf tea, which is supposed to help with um, preparing your uterus. Some people say it makes your labor shorter. Lots of things that people say. Don't know if they're true or not, but you know, I thought people are drinking it, it's fine, it's safe, so I'm gonna do it anyway. And with that, I was also bouncing on my yoga bowl and eating all the things that if you look up, like how to induce pregnancy naturally, I was basically trying most of those things and eating dates, pineapple, things like that, which is a bit silly and a bit, you know, it probably doesn't do anything, but if buying a pineapple can help and eating it can help, then I'm gonna try it out, you know. Week 38 plus two, I had another appointment. They get a lot more frequent at this time. And they told me that my baby had uh, started to get in the pelvis. And for most first time moms, once they start going into the pelvis, they don't come back up. So I was like, okay, He's on his way, like he knows what he's doing, it's all happening. Um, they don't know when it's gonna happen from that point, but you know that, you know, he kinda knows what he's doing, I don't know, at that point. And I also tried harvesting colostrum, which colostrum is the first milk that comes out. So I tried getting that out, I only got like two drops out, but it's fine. Um, afterwards, I didn't really have any issues, so if you have the same and nothing comes out, then yeah, it's fine, like you'll be okay afterwards. And 39 plus 2, he was lower in the pelvis and yeah, I had my midwife appointment. So they booked me an induction for 40 days plus 10. So basically, if I hadn't given birth by then, they would have done it. You don't have to take it, you don't have to do it, but you know, if you want to, you can. There's more risks if you wait longer and also baby gets bigger. So at what point do you want it to come out? But basically, that was my third trimester. And as I said, I'm going to do a video all about my delivery and birth that I'll link somewhere whenever that gets up 
on the internet but for now uh thank you so much if you have any questions anything like that please let me know in the comments and i might do a q a as well uh in the future but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah thank you so much for watching i'll see you with my birth video next bye